Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture number 12 of the subject business law and today we are going to discuss about the law of partnership part 1 i am dr rama bansal working as assistant professor at arya college ludhiana and this is a dth swayamprabha mhrd new delhi sponsored project so today we are going to cover the topics meaning of partnership types of partners partnership deed registration of partnership firms under which we will discuss procedure of registration effects of non registration of a firm and at last we will discuss the rights and duties of the partners so let's start with the meaning of partnership partnership seems to be very interesting word partners means it the the word itself says something means where there are more than one person is involved Section four of Partnership Act defines that partnership is the relation between persons who have agreed to share the profits of a business carried on by all or any of them acting for all. This definition conveys a few features of a partnership, where we can say there must be two or more persons who should enter into an agreement to carry on a joint business. and to share the profit of that business and this business relationship is called as partnership the persons who will enter into this business on in this partnership and who will work with each other would be individually called as partners and would collectively would be known as a firm what are the essential features of a valid partnership there must be an association of two or more persons one person cannot be a partner of himself so there should be at least two persons to form a valid partnership the person yes should be competent to enter into a contract that means they should fulfill all the conditions of a competent party to enter into a contract let's see the example a b and c were three partners carrying on spare parts business in partnership subsequently a and b retired from the firm and c continued the business so in this case there is no partnership as c alone cannot carry on the business indian partnership act otherwise <clears throat> don't give any provision regarding the maximum numbers of partners in a partnership business but section 11 of companies act fixes the maximum number of partners in a partnership business the section 11 of companies act says that in case of banking business the number of partners should not exceed 10 and which cannot be exceeded than number of 20 in any other business but according to section 11 of companies act if this number exceeds in any partnership it would become an illegal association and then if the even the partners want to continue with the business they may register this partnership as a company under the companies act 1956 it would not undergo under the partnership act that means in short partnership act doesn't define the maximum number of partners but section 11 of companies act 1956 defines it 10 in case of banking business 20 in case of any other business second point is there must be an agreement section 5 of indian partnership act defines that the relation of partnership arises from contract and not from the status means there should be um there, there should be any express or implied contract between the partners express is always considered the priority in case of partnership all partners must enter into an agreement 
if any partnership ex uh, comes into existence without the agreement it would not be considered as the partnership business and the partnership should come out of the agreement not by the status or not by operation of any law and that's why it distinguishes the partnership from a co-business and a joint Hindu family carrying on the business. In joint Hindu uh, family, uh, the business comes by the status, comes by the operation of law but not by the agreement. The agreement to constitute partnership may be expressed or implied as I have already said. So, this is uh, clear from the case of Abdul versus Century Woods Industries. So, here what are the facts of the case? A and B, two brothers were living together with their father C. On the death of their father, they inherited certain properties which they did not divide. They sold a garden and invested this amount in a separate timber business. There was no partnership agreement, but it appeared that they intended to share the profits of a timber business. The business failed and the question arose about the distribution of liabilities. It was held that there was partnership and they must bear the liabilities as partners. In this case, there was an implied agreement of partnership which arose from the conduct of the partners. Because they have joined that business with an intention to share the profits of the timber business. They have implied contract, uh, they have implied agreement of partnership between them. Third under the partnership is there must be some business. The partnership business must be carried on to carry on a some to carry on some business. Here business means some lawful activity, the result of which would be in profits. There may be some losses, but the objective to running that uh, lawful business is to earn the profits. The, it, it also includes any trade, any occupation or any kind of profession. Uh, it is, uh, it is uh, here uh, important to mention that the objective of the of carrying business may not be long and permanent. It may not be long and permanent undertaking, but the partnership business can be for a single business or for a single venture or for a single undertaking. Say uh, A and B agreed to produce a film and share the profits of hiring, uh, hiring it out. So, it was hold to be the partnership. That means if the partnership was just for producing a film and to get the profits out of it, it is a valid partnership. To constitute a valid partnership, the business must be in existence. Means anything which is to come in the future does not result into a partnership. Means when the agreement for partnership was done, there must be some business carrying on in existence. Let's see the case of R. R. Sarna versus Rubin. A deposited a sum of money with the Kanpur Municipal Board in the name of a civil engineer company. The object of this deposit was to obtain a license for producing electricity in partnership with another person B. The municipal board refused the license and the money was refunded. A claimed the hold money. B contended that it was a partnership money and it should be used to pay partnership liabilities. The court held that there was no partnership at all because the business didn't come into the existence it is to be operated in future that means the condition that the uh, business must be in existence at the time of the agreement uh, makes this point void that the firm the the money should be paid for the partnership liabilities next point is there must be sharing of profit when more than one person join to do any business, the objective definitely would be sharing of profits. Here profit means the net profit, the surplus money after paying all the expenses of the partnership business. And the, there must be a specified agreement to share the profits in any specified ratio or if in absence of any contract, they can uh, share the profits in a in equal proportion. 
if any person any partner is entitled to whole of the profits of the partnership this is not a valid contract of partnership so let's see the example a agreed with b a goldsmith to buy and deliver gold to b they further agreed that b shall make the ornaments of such gold which shall be sold they shall share the resulting profits and losses in this case a and b are the partner because they are sharing the profits of the uh, business of the partnership sharing of profits also included sharing of losses it's not necessary when the business is done when the activities in the business are done there would definitely be profits there may be losses so the partnership business also include the agreement for sharing of losses and it is not necessary that all the partners may share the losses any partner may be there if there is a contract Uh, there is an agreement to that that the particular partner will not contribute for losses it is possible a person may be partner only for the shares of a profit a, part, a person can work only for profits but whole of the losses would not be bear by the a single person the sharing of profits is only a prima facie evidence of existence of partnership and not the conclusive test means it is one of the conditions of the partnership that they they are meeting the partners are meeting for sharing of the profits and uh, that's why we can say that everyone who receives the profit is not a partner in a firm they have uh, they may have the different interest are also known as non partnership interest in the business so they may not be the partners who are getting the profits now it is in now it becomes important to explain that what is the meaning of non partnership interests non partnership interest section 6 of the partnership act explains it non partnership interest includes joint owners sharing profit or gross returns money lenders if receiving profits out of the business they are not the partners servants or agents receiving the part of the profit they may not be considered as partners widow or child of a deceased partner let's suppose any partner has died any partner is a deceased partner of the partnership if any widow or any child of that deceased partner is getting the share out of the partnership they may not be considered they are not the partners into a partnership firm and similarly seller of the goodwill if someone has sold his or her goodwill to someone else and he is getting now the uh, pro, now the share out of the profits made by the partnership firm he cannot be treated as a partner in the partnership firm that means every person who is receiving the profit is not the partner it depends upon the agreement that how he is sharing the profits of the business next point is there must be mutual agency between the partners the agency relations means the business of partnership must be carried on by all the partners or by partners acting for all other partners means all the 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 work done by one partner should be like this he it can make the other partners the firms uh, the liable to the third parties means a person must not act for himself alone he should work for all the partners for all the firms each partner is a representative of all other partner each partner is a representative of the partnership firm the partner works as an agent as well as an principal when the when one partner works for all on behalf of all other partners he is treated as an agent but when he works for himself as a part of the partnership firm he is treated as principal section 18 clearly explains subject to the provisions of the act the partner is the agent of the firm for the business of the firm till now we are clear with the meaning of the partnership what are the essential features of a valid partnership we have gone through now we come to the types of the partners the persons who contribute into a partnership business are individually known as partners section 4 of indian partnership act explains the meaning of the partners firm and firm name it these are defined as the persons who have entered into a partnership 
when with one another are called individually partners collectively a firm and the name under which their business is carried on is called as the firm name let's see the example a d and c entered into a partnership with each other they were carrying on the printing business under the name and style of a and company in this case a b and c are individually the partners and collectively a firm and a and company is the name of the firm for which they are working now let's talk about the type of partners one uh, one type of partner is the actual partner actual partner as its name indicates who is actually a partner who is taking the active part in the conduct of the partnership business uh, the active partner is also known as ostensible partner as he is uh, he he can make liable to third parties for all the acts done by him in the ordinary course of business that means an active partner can make all the partners liable to the third parties by doing the activities by doing the acts in the ordinary course of business of the partnership and in case the active partner gets the retirement he has to give the public notice of his retirement and if he don't give any public notice and any person in the public believes that he is still a partner and makes any kind of uh, and and deals with the company then he would be liable for that particular act and if he and uh, and also and he, if he would remain liable for all the acts of the other partners also even after the retirement if he do not give the public notice of his retirement second type of partner is a dormant or sleeping partner and this is not an active partner this partner is not known to the outside world the 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 persons outside the firm don't know about this partner this partner uh, is uh, is is contributing in the same manner as the other partners are doing as all partners are contributing the part of the capital in the business he is also contributing but the basic difference in in this and active partner is that he does not take any active part in the conduct of the partnership business but yes he would remain liable to third parties for all the acts done by the other partners and his his liability comes to an end at the time of his retirement and like the acting partner he need not to give notice to the public about his retirement permanent incapacity of the partner to perform his duty is no ground for the dissolution of the firm because already he is not an active partner and on this basis a firm cannot go for dissolution third type of partner is a nominal partner nominal partner has no real interest in the business he is not entitled to share the profits of the partnership he don't contribute in in form of capital the only interest of the nominal partner is that he only lends his name to the firm to use in the partnership business his name is used in the firm as if he is an actual partner but really in actual he is not having any interest he is not contributing the capital he is not getting the profits he don't take part in the actual conduct of the partnership business but he would remain liable for all the acts of the firm any act done by any other active or dormant partner he would be liable for that next is partner in profits only these type of partners are being introduced in the business to share the profits only they are not liable for the losses of the company in any case if the partnership firm occurs or, or bears any kind of loss all the other partner except the partners in profit only would share the losses they do not have the, any interest in the management of the business but they are liable to the third parties for the acts done by the partnership firm next is the incoming partner when the when there is a partnership firm if any new partner enters into the firm in between this is called as incoming partner similarly outgoing partner 
from the existing firm if any partner goes out of the business because of his retirement or because of his unwillingness to work with the partners the person would be known as outgoing partner sub partner when a partner shares his profits with some another person that person is known as the sub partner and when a partner of the firm agrees to share with and this this uh, this agreeness of sharing the profit may be with some an outsider who is already not a partner of the firm he is not partner in the original firm he has no right against the original firm no liabilities against the original firm he can not claim for the profits uh, uh, profits as a share out of the Uh, profits of the original firm he can only uh, ask to the partner who has uh, who is giving his shares to him as a sub partner next is a minor partner as we all know the person who is a below who is below the age of 18 years is known as the minor partner a minor partner can never be entered as a full fledged partner in a firm because he don't have the capacity to be a party to contract minor part minor partner can only be entered for the benefits of the firm for the profits of the firm for sharing of profits to an already existing firm he cannot be a full fledged partner in a new firm next partner by estoppel or holding out when some person treats himself represents himself as if he is a partner in a firm but actually he is not so the person who would who would deal with that person assuming assuming him that he is a partner is a firm that person is that means he is the actual person who is pretending is prevented from denying that he is not a partner so this type of partner is known as past partner by estoppel or partner by holding out so uh, till now we have discussed the various type of partners uh, the important one are active partners in profit dormant partner etc minor partner etc now we come to the partnership deed it's a very important term to know when we study about the partnership laws what is a partnership deed partnership deed is is a document which contains the terms and conditions of the partnership it is the it is created when the partnership agreements are being done the this can be either oral or can be in writing but the partnership deed must be in writing for the successful running of the business so it should be carefully carefully drafted because it it contains all the terms and conditions of the partnership it should be stamped according to indian stamp act 1899 while preparing the partnership deed every partner should be careful about the terms and conditions to be included in this what the partnership deed includes name of the firm name of the partners nature and place of the business date of commencement of partnership firm that means from when the partnership firm is going to work duration of the firm it is if it is for the fixed time period otherwise it 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 would not be the part of that amount of capital to be contributed by the partners rules regarding operation of accounts that means who will see the operation of accounts who can have the copy ratios in which profit and losses to be shared when any partner is to be entered for profit only then the loss part would be missing in that case rules regarding admission means when a new new partner can be admitted into an existing partnership business retirement of partner mode of dissolution means if in any case the partnership is to be dissolved then which mode is to be used and settlement of the accounts on dissolution all these things would become the part of the partnership deed so overall it's a very important partnership that means in case of any default made by any person any partner this partnership deed plays a very active role so it should be clear carefully drafted next we come to the registration of a partnership firm how a partnership firm is being registered registration of firm means the recording of firm's name along with prescribed particulars in the register of firms kept in the office of registrar of firm 
means when any partnership firm comes into existence its name must be registered with the registrar of firms so section 56 to 71 of the partnership act deals with the registration of the firms although registration of the firm partnership firm is not a compulsory affair but it is if it is registered it can uh, enjoy some benefits which are only for the registered partnership firms and which are missing in case of unregistered partnership firms that means it's totally optional at the part of the firm if they want to get benefits of registration they can register themselves or if they don't want to uh, get benefits or they don't care about the benefits of registration they can avoid it non registration doesn't affect the partnership agreement or other transactions of the partnership means if any firm if do not opt for the registration it would not affect their transactions but yes as i have already said the unregistered firms has some uh, some drawbacks like they cannot file a suit against any person for the price of goods supplied by the firm they can only it, it the registration is only a reliable evidence of the existence of an of a partnership firm how the partnership firm is being registered there is a process for that there is a procedure we will discuss that a firm may got registered at any time at the time of its formation or at any time thereafter means section 58 sub section 1 says that if at the time of the contract of the partnership any firm wants to get them registered they can but if uh, if they if they think so after uh, after coming into existence after 5 year 10 years they want to uh, make them register uh, register they can even do that after uh, after so many years uh, what is to be done an application should be submitted with the fees re requisite fees Uh, required for that and this application is to be submitted to the registrar of the firms and app application must be sent with the uh, with the with the provisions that where the business would be situated what would be the place of the business and the application form should also contain the documents the the particulars like the name of the firm the principal place of the firm the name of any other places where the firm carry on business the date when each partner joined the firm means it would include the information about each and every partner the name in full and permanent address of partners the duration of the firm and most important this application form must be signed by all the partners if any partner not willing to sign this application form that partner cannot be a partner in the registered partnership firm means to be a partner in registered partnership firm every partner need to sign and how this process of completion gets completed there are different views means when we say that any firm is a registered firm any partnership firm is a registered firm there is a process for applying uh, we have discussed that process since the application is to be submitted with the signature of all the partners once the application is being submitted can we say that this firm is a registered firm there are different judicial decisions regarding that when we say that registration process is completed number 1 registration is complete as soon as the application form along with prescribed form is deposited in the office of registrar of firm this was given in the case of jr and om contractor versus it commissioner so this 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 view was given in this case once the application is being submitted the firm will be treated as a registered partnership firm but the second view in case of cit versus jaya lakshmi rice and oil mills here the the case says that the completion the form the registration is complete from the date when the registrar files a statement and make entries in the register of firm when when any firm when when any entry is being made regarding the uh, in the register of the registrar regarding the firm's existence from that date the firm got registered so there are different views given by the different judicial different uh, judicial decisions now if any firm once registered wants to change any particular in the registration form can they change yes there is a provision they can make the changes 
the changes may be regarding first change in the firm name and principal place of business be being this is a major change the firm wants to change its name the firm wants to change the principal place of the business so in this case a fresh fresh application is to be submitted to the office of the registrar along with the prescribed fees as it was done when the firm was once registered again it should be signed by all the partners it must be verified by all the partners that the firm is going to change its name or principal place of business second change regarding the closing and opening of branches it can be intimated to the registrar of the firms that firm is closing any particular branch or firm is opening any a uh, new branch then there is a change in the name or permanent address of any uh, any partner and this must uh, this intimation sent be sent uh, must be sent by that particular partner or any agent of the firm to the registrar of firm if there is a change in the constitution of the firm and its dissolution so normally firms constitution changes when any new partners comes into the business how it changes let's suppose there were three partners sharing the equal share of the profit but one partner retires and a new partner enters or the, the there there is a fourth partner in the business now there would be a change in the proportion of the profit of, of the of the existing partners too so there would be a change in the constitution so similarly when any partner exit from the business there is a change in the constitution and this must be conveyed to the registrar of the firms next change regarding minor partners decision on becoming a major as we know uh, any minor partner can be admitted to the business for the profit purpose only and once that minor partner becomes the major then that minor partner who is becoming the may who is becoming major now has to convey his inti uh, his intention to becoming full fledged partner in that firm or not next by the minor partner himself or he can do it by himself or any authorized agent of his can convey this now uh, now i i i i said in the previous slides that there is a, uh, there are a few benefits which a registered firm can have that means there are effects of non registration of a firm what are those effects one the partners cannot file a suit against the firm or other partners means if any of the partner uh, makes any default then the the partners cannot filed a suit against the firm or the other partners registration of the firm is not possible on arising of any dispute which means suppose the firm is not a registered firm and any dispute arises and uh, on arising of dispute now firm wants to register themselves so it would not be possible to register the firm once the dispute has been arised that means firm the registration firm is possible before the before the arising of any kind of dispute so this was clear in the case of anupurna fertilizers versus journal store when suit is filed without registration it is liable to be dismissed and cannot be rectified by subsequent registration so the case was decided this way second effect is the firm cannot file a suit against third parties which is covered under section 69 subsection 2 uh, the unregistered firm cannot file a suit against any third party in case of any default this is clear with the case of kavita trehen versus balsara hygiene products in this case what happened a and company an unregistered firm sold certain goods to b on credit but b failed to pay the price of the goods in this case the firm cannot enforce its right in a court of law by filing a suit for the recovery of the price because an unregistered firm cannot file a suit an unregistered firm can first get registered if any unregistered firm wants to file a suit there is a process they can first get registered then they can file a fresh suit if the firm if if there is a still within the period of limitation means if there is still a period left to file a suit next is the partner of the firm cannot claim a set off covered under section 69 subsection 3 
the term set off may be defined as adjustment of debts by one party due to him from the other party who files a suit against him let's see the example a and company an unregistered firm borrowed rupees 10000 from b a money lender the firm has also supplied certain goods worth rupees 1000 to b on credit on firm's refusal to pay the loan b filed a suit against it in this case firm cannot say that rupees 1000 owed by b to the firm should be set off against b's claim of rupees 10000 against the firm because the firm is an unregistered entity and the partner of the firm cannot claim a set off now there are some exceptions to non registration of a firm means whether the firm is not uh, not registered even then there are few benefits which can be enjoyed one the third party can file a suit against the firm firm is not registered in that case firm cannot file a suit but the third party can always file a suit against the firm in case of default the partners of an unadjusted uh, un unregistered firm can file a suit for dissolution of firm they can always file for accounts of the dissolved firm or for realization of the property of the dissolved firm in in case of dissolution or its affairs any unregistered firm can file a suit the rights of an unregistered firm all of its partner are not affected if the firm has no place of business in india that means if the firm is working from outside india the it can enjoy all the rights of a registered firm and if the unregistered firm makes a claim to set off and the subject matter of suit does not exceed rupees 100 it doesn't affect it doesn't get affected with the non registration of a firm the official assignee or receiver may bring an action to realize the property of an insolvent partner even if the firm is a non registered firm now uh, we come to uh, we have known about the uh, process of registration of a firm what are the uh, benefits of registration what are the exceptions to the non registration now we come to very important part of this uh, discussion that is the rights and duties of the partners where the partners are there there are two or more persons are there into a business they have some rights they have some duties these rights and duties are towards business towards partners and towards the third parties let's discuss all these duties and rights in detail first we will start with the duties of the partners so among the duties of the partner the first duty of the partner is duty of good faith every partner is to work they is to work in the good faith means every partner has a duty to work in a good faith to dealing with the other partners a partner should not deceive the other partners by concealing the material facts material facts are those facts which can affect the working of the partnership firm which can have effect on the operations of the firm and in in working in good faith a partner should never try to make the secret profits for himself at the expense of the firm at the name of the firm that means overall a partner has a duty to work in a good faith next is duty to carry on the firm business to the greatest common advantage uh, whenever the partner is working for the partnership firm he has a duty to work in a greatest common advantage he should work like this with his all efforts whole of the firm should be in benefit basically this principle this duty is also based on the principle of good faith every partner should use his knowledge his skill for the greatest common advantage of the firm he should not try to make any personal or the private profit the every effort done into the business should be towards the greatest common advantage of the partnership business let's see the example a and b were partners in a firm of sugar refiners A had greater skill in buying the sugar cane and he was interested to buy the same for the firm. He supplied the sugar cane from his personal stocks which he had bought earlier at a lower price. 
he charged the prevailing market price and made considerable profits for himself it was held that firm was entitled to those profits and a must account to the firm for these personal profits because it is a prime was duty of the partner to work for the advantage of the firm not for own not not for own self so as it is clear in this example mr a has worked for himself that means he is liable to pay to the firm the profits which he has secretly made third duty is duty to render true account a partner should always give the proper accounts true accounts to all the other partners to all the partners involved in the business next is duty to give full information if any partner has any kind of information which is related with the partnership business that must be conveyed to the other partners too and if a partner is in a position of that kind of information which is related with the affairs of the company assets of the firm or liabilities of the firm which can harm the position goodwill of the firm in the future or functions of the firm that information should not be concealed and this must be given to all the partners and here it is a duty of the partner to work in utmost good faith next duty is duty to indemnify for loss caused by fraud if a due to the fraud any any liability has been caused to the partnership firm so it is a duty of that particular partner to indemnify that loss which is being caused by his fraud fraudulent behavior so if any loss is caused so the partner has the the firm the partnership firm has a right to get the same from him let's see the example a and b were two partners in a firm of solicitors c a lady consulted a about the improvement of the income of her property a advised her to dispose of this property and asked her to bring the title deeds of this property a obtained c's signature on a plain paper and also took the title deed from her and this is a fraudulent act he converted this paper as d de sale deed to himself thereafter he sold the property and misappropriated the money in this case the firm is liable to pay liable to c for fraud committed by a because a is a partner of the firm he has done the act on the name of the partnership firm but he he has made a fraud he has done a fraudulent act so a is liable to compensate the firm for the loss suffered due to his fraud next duty of the partner is duty to share losses every partner in absence of subject to contract to contrary every partner is liable to share losses only except the partner entered for share uh, for for sharing the profits only every partner has to share the losses of the business this loss may be in the equal proportion or in any other proportion which was agreed at the time of the contract next duty is duty to attend diligently in absence of contract to contrary any partner is not entitled to receive any kind of commission any kind of salary from the partnership business but if there is a contract it would be given and in absence of all these uh, incentives every partner is uh, liable to work carefully in conducting the firm's business and he should if any kind of loss is being occurred into the business due to his negligence the 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 business firm should compensate that loss to the firm uh, the the partner should compensate that that loss to the firm and if this loss is occurred due to willful neglect then he is he is bound to make compensation to the firm also willful neglect is what willful neglect is something more than a negligence in 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 this what happen a partner will not be liable for mere errors of judgment or for all acts done in the 
good faith so that means in case when the partner is liable to work diligently partner is liable to work carefully and he is willfully neglecting the work in all these cases if any loss caused to the firm due to the uh, due to the negligence of the partner the partner is liable to give all the compensation to the partnership firm next duty of the partner is duty to account for personal profits if he has made if any partner has made any personal profits out of the firm's uh, activities so he is bound to return that in following cases a partner has to pay back one personal profits from any transaction and use of property of the firm if he has if if he has uh, done any transaction out by using the property of the firm and he has earned any kind of profits he is liable to return that personal profits from the business connection of the firm personal profits from the use of the name of the firm so this is clear this would be clear from the example a and b were partners in the firm they were carrying on the business of importing salt from foreign countries while buying salt from the firm a bought some quantity for himself and resold the same on his personal accounts it was held that he was liable to account for these personal profits because he has done this by using the name of the firm next duty of partner is duty to account for profits of a competing business any partner cannot uh, earn profits by a competing business of the partnership firm if he does so he is bound to account for such profits let's see the example a and b were partners in a business the the um, the firm was carrying on the business of supplying meat to the government but later on it was also found that he was also engaged with some other persons in supplying meat to the government and earned personal profits so it was held that b was bound to account for the profits so made by him next duty is duty to act within authority every partner has some actual or implied authority so every partner should work in that particular authority it should not cross the boundaries of the authority what is the actual or implied authority we will discuss in detail in coming lectures duty to use firm property exclusively for firm the every partnership firm has some property so it is a duty of the partners to use that property only from the firm the property which belongs to the partners but this property is to be used exclusively for the uh, routine affairs of the business and if any partner makes any kind of secret profits by using this property he is required to pay back the same to the firm let's see the example a and b owned a ship under a partnership a made considerable personal profits by making various contracts so it was held that a was liable to account for such profits as these were made from the use of partnership property only next duty not to transfer his rights and interest without the consent of all the partners a partner cannot transfer his rights and interest the relationship between all the partners depends upon the mutual trust and confidence and this mutual trust and confidence cannot be transferred to someone outsider so any person if transfers his rights and interest then he uh, he can uh, he cannot do that without the consent but yes he can transfer his share of profit to some outsider but not the rights and interest of of his in the firm till now we have discussed about the duties of the partners where there are duties there are rights let's discuss the rights of the partners the first right is right to take part in the business every partner can take part in the management of the business any decision making of the business and the uh, this right must be exercised for promoting the interest and reputation of the firm goodwill of the firm but not for damaging the same if any partner is uh, is taking care is is doing this to damage the reputation of the firm this is not acceptable and it is clear from the case of suresh kumar versus amit kumar in this case a partner wrote to the banker not to honor firm's check 
and two suppliers not to supply material to the firm he was restrained by court from doing so here uh, there is a partner who is doing negative publicity of the firm or who is going who is doing the acts against the firm's business so this may be restrained by the court also right to be consulted in every important decision the the opinion of any partner matters so the every partner has the right to express his opinion in the decision making because there the the partners may differ every every individual can differ in their opinion on some ordinary matters or on fundamental matters but here the point is if there is a difference in the opinion on the ordinary matters that can be settled down by the majority of the partners means where the majority of partners are being settled they are okay with the decision they are okay with the opinion that can be settled down but if there is a difference in the fundamental matters in, in opinion that there they, they all the partners should be consented on one argument and this would be the final one next right is right to have access to books every partner has a right to examine all the record books and accounts of the firm even every partner can have copy of such accounts that means nobody can stop any partner to assess the account books of any firm next right is right to share profit every partner has a right to share the profits equally of the partnership firm partner may also agree to share the profit in different proportion which is being already mentioned in their contract if it is not mentioned they will share the profits into the equal proportion next is right to interest on capital and on advances if any kind of capital is being lent by the shareholder uh, by the partner or any kind of advance is being given to the partnership firm by the partner so every partner is entitled to get interest on that so the rate of interest on advances is fixed at rupees uh, at 6% per annum and interesting to know that every person every partner is entitled to get an interest even if the firm losses even if firm suffer the losses there there are no profits even then this interest is to be paid and and moreover this interest on capital and this interest on advances is to be paid out of the profit earned during by the partnership business next right of partner is right to indemnity every partner can recover the expenses incurred by him in the routine affair of the business in the ordinary course of an business and every expense incurred in emergency also can be a can be indemnified uh, should should be indemnified to a partner next right is right to use the partnership property because the property the partnership property belongs to the partners so every partnership property can be used by the partner but the condition is it must be exclusively used for the purpose of partnership not for the personal affairs next is right to be consulted at the time of admission of new partner when any new partner is to be the part of the business because it will change in the constitution of the partnership deed so every whenever a new partner is being added into a business the person should be the the all other partners must be consulted it is a right of the partner to know each and every condition of joining of a new partner next is right to retire from the firm if in case of any uh disagreements or in case of uh, some mental in uh, mental or physical incapabilities any person wants to get out of the partnership business he has right to retire from the firm at any time but this should be with the consent of all the persons and this may be by the express agreement into the partnership deed also and one more way uh, to get retire from the firm is to give a written notice of the retirement to all the partners and in case of active partner the person has to give notice to the general public also that he is retiring from the uh, retiring from the partnership otherwise the person would remain liable for the affairs of the business right not to be expelled 
any partner can not be expelled from the business uh, only uh, only because of that he is sharing the profit or he is or, or he has done something wrong uh, not willfully every partner has a right to continue into the business and these terms are also being mentioned in the partnership deed at the time of the agreement the next right of the partners is the right to remuneration uh, otherwise in contract to contrary no partner can get the remuneration from the business from any uh, for uh, in form of any salary in form of any commission for the services done but if there is any express agreement in the contract of partnership that any person any partner can get the remuneration out of the partnership business then this is a right of the partner to get that remuneration and if uh, uh in case of uh, in case if there is no partnership agreement no no agreement regarding the remuneration and the partner performs any extraordinary services even then he is not uh, he, even then he is uh, he don't have right to get the remuneration means the partner can get the remuneration only in case when there is an express agreement regarding that so till now we have discussed all the points which we were which we have planned to discuss in this lecture meaning of partnership when two persons or two or more persons joined into a business with the objective of running a business and to share the profits out of it it is a partnership type of partners active partner dormant partner partner in profits only nominal partner minor partner next is partnership deed a very important term for the partnership partnership deed contains all the conditions all the rules of the partnership all the agreement terms of the partnership which is very much required at the time of admission and exit of any partner or at the time of the dissolution registration of partnership firm there is a proper procedure in which a new firm has to get registered uh, or the firm already existing can register themselves after after so many years even uh, there is an application form with the requisite fees which is to be given at the in the registrar of office and uh, uh, there there are chances if if you want to alter something later on there are provisions for alterations too and if any firm get registered they 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 are getting a lot of benefits for that but there are uh, the some exceptions under which the non registration doesn't affect those benefits and at last we have covered the rights and duties of the various partners towards each other and towards the partnership firm so this is over with this lecture law of partnership 1 thank you so much